Hokey dokey. In this video, I will work through three examples of this problem. So stick around for three different examples, but the same type of problem. The first thing we will try in any of these problems is plugging in the value that they give us. So in this case, zero into the function that they give us. So first thing we'll do is negative four e to the zero plus four, which simplifies to negative four e to the four. So this should be some numerical value. We just need to find what that is. And I will do that in Desmos. Negative four e raised to the fourth. And we get, I think that was right, was that right? Yeah. Uh, so we get negative 218.4 as our answer. So we look for the closest value to that, which is option D. So D is our answer here. It's simply a plug and chug type of problem in this case. If you have any questions about P calc, how you would plug this into P calc is you would likely type in four, so the number four first, and then you'll hit hopefully some E to the X button that exists. So you'll do it kind of in an opposite order. You'll hit four, then E to the X, then I'll probably just multiply that by another negative four. That's P calc, and then if you prefer Excel, it's just a slightly different function. You'll, into any cell, you'll type in equals uh, minus four, times, actually, yeah, let's go and do times. The function is e x p for e to the something, and then that something will go in parentheses. So if you type in negative four times e x p in parentheses four, that should output negative 218. If you have any questions on how to type things in, please let me know, and I can try to address them. All right, second example. Again, the first thing we want to try is plugging in the value, however, in this case, it's infinity. So you would think if we just plugged in infinity on top and bottom, we'd probably get infinity over infinity. Uh, but the question is, how can we, you know, what can we do with that? It all comes down to the highest exponent terms on top and on bottom when we're dealing with either infinity or negative infinity. So what we can do is basically neglect all these other terms and we're trying to wrap our heads around what to do with uh, negative 6z squared over z squared. In this case, because the z squareds, because z squared is the highest exponent on top and z squared is the highest degree term on the bottom, what we'll do is say that this limit should approach or should be equal to the coefficients of these z terms, sorry, z squared terms over one another. The coefficient up here is negative six, coefficient down here is one, negative six over one is negative six. And so negative six will be our answer. And you might remember these rules from finding horizontal asymptotes in the past. It's the same exact rules as finding limits as x or z goes to infinity. So the other cases you could see are if the degree on top is larger. So if it's something like z cubed over z squared, this would go to infinity. Because if we plug in infinity to z, basically the numerator will increase to infinity at a much faster rate. So this is one example. And then if you have the opposite case, say we had negative 6z over z squared, and the degree in the bottom was larger than that of the top, then this would go to zero. And so if the degree on top is larger, it, the limit goes to infinity. If the degree in the bottom is larger, the limit goes to zero. And again, if the limit, uh, sorry, if the degrees on top and bottom are equal, the limit will go to the coefficients divided by one another. So a random example, if we have three, sorry, negative three x to the fourth plus seven over four x to the fourth plus three x cubed, our highest degree on top, our highest exponent is x to the fourth, and that has a coefficient of negative three. 
degree on the bottom is x to the fourth, coefficient of four, so that limit would equal negative three-fourths. All right, let's go ahead and move on to this last one. Again, we have a limit uh, of some function as x goes to infinity. However, the rules are a little different here because we can't kind of analyze these in the same exact way. We can for a little bit, but then um, we need sort of a different approach. So what happens when we plug in infinity here? We basically have infinity plus 2 over 2. Well, that infinity on top pretty much overpowers everything. So infinity plus 2 is just infinity. Infinity divided by 2 is still going to be infinity because it's just infinitely large. So what we have is e raised to the infinity. e to the infinity, you could try it out in Desmos or Excel or maybe pcalc if you just did e raised to a super large number. So I'll just do e raised to, say, 999, undefined, because it's so large. Let's try just 99. 9.889 times 10 to the 42. So that is a super, super large number, and that's just e to the 99. So you could imagine e to the infinity is just infinity. So really what we have is negative 2 in front of that times infinity. The 2 gets absorbed, and so really, uh, but the negative is still uh, accounted for. So we will just call this negative infinity. So that is option D. I hope this makes some sense. If you find some more weird examples that don't really match these ones, feel free to uh, take a screenshot of them or picture of them and email them to me at carterd3 at vt.edu. These ones can be a little weird, um, but hopefully these instructions make some sense. All right.